Hi, Choreo. How you doing? <laughs> it's your girl, Miss Tia. Um, so today, we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to give you a few exercises. Um, I actually kind of like this whole video thing because I'm feeling like I'm really getting to talk to you on a more like intellectual basis because like I usually joke around with you guys. I'm very like, ah, ha, ha, he, he, he. But we get to like talk and be intellects together. Um, so today, since we don't have a lot of messing up my stuff, Chad. <laughs> so, um, since we don't have a lot of space, space is what I thought we would talk about, you know, how can we use our space effectively? So I'm going to read you, um, some of this chapter from this book. It's a little wordy, like I said before. Um, but I'll explain everything and I'll go back and I'll go through when it gets a little wordy, I guess. Space. A body exists in space, moves in space, is contained by space. A dancer's planes and design in space. The direction and level she moves in and her attitude towards the space all help define the image she is creating. Her focus and the way she shapes space are integral parts of the space. Space is the 3D canvas within which the dancer creates a dynamic image. Breaking it down into component parts brings a wealth of possibilities for movement exploration. Space can be considered as an active participant, an abstract partner even. Um, so I think Sometimes that we forget that the space around us is a part of the dance too. And the environment that you're in is a part of the dance as well. So you have to incorporate the space around you and encompass that in your choreography. Is it a small space? Do you want, what visuals are you trying to send to your audience? Um, where was I? Space can be considered as an active participant and abstract partner. Yeah. What beginning dance student hasn't played with the space that is closing in on them? You know, like mimes and stuff when they're like, and they're like, I'm in a box, that kind of a thing. Yes, movement can make an empty dead space into a dynamically pulsating one. Mary Wigmon repeatedly used space as an active element Mm-hmm, yeah. I've seen a lot of her works, and even though um, it was just the the way that she would use her space, even if she wasn't using all of the space around her, the way that the body was designed really encompassed this space. And it really framed the negative space around her, if that makes sense. Um, she went even further, defining dance as motivated tension in space and as a creator of space, hmm, which is very interesting. I'm going to skip ahead a few pages. We're going to talk about levels a little bit. Um, so levels. Low is about earthiness, being into the ground, having a strong feeling for gravity. The moments range from the heaviness of dragging to the abandon of a wild but earthy folk dance. The main emphasis of middle level is that it facilitates goingness and a standing that is on the ground rather than of or into it. And while being the transition between low and high, it contains some relation to each. You know? um, high level is about elevation, flying and defying gravity. It is also about the effortlessness. The dancer is poised above the earth, barely touching it, seeming not to need or use the ground. It epitomizes by the illusion the ballet creates, though as every good dancer knows, the secret of that illusion is using the ground. So basically all that's saying is that um, we associate depth and a low level with like the ground and the earth and being connected to a lower sense. And then um, things that are higher at a higher level um, are like elevated light, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can move. I just wanna know it. <laughs> it's okay, I can edit the video. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then basically 
what I tell you guys when you're turning, you have to go up to go down and down to go up, yeah? This is um, an improv exercise that we've done before in class, but it's just called Levels. I'm gonna read you the prompt. Um, if you want to, put on some music now, maybe something like soothing, relaxing, so you can like get into a good frame of mind. But I'm gonna read this to you, yeah? Some things to think about um, for your improv and to play around a bit. Lie on the floor. Feel everything draining out of you and into the earth below. Grow roots down into the earth. Become a part of the earth. How could you move and still be a part of the earth? As on the bottom of the ocean or being in the mud. Go out of the earth just a little. Move on the earth now. Let your roots dissolve, break them, or pull them out. Try moving toward your feet, head, side, while still on your belly, on your back or side. Try moving in all directions. Drag, wriggle, slither, Roll as many different ways as you can and gradually work yourself up to sitting. Explore the process of arriving at sitting as if it is for the first time. What can you do now that you could not do before? How many ways can you sit? Be a model for an art class, giving them a series of two second sitting poses. Be a moving piece of sculpture on that level. Can you roll in a sitting position? Try a variety of ways of getting to your knees. Try traveling. Crawl on your knees and elbows and knees and hands and feet and elbows. <laughs> Do you feel clumsy? Use it. Feet and hands. Try it heavy and dragging or light and puppy-like. Stay on all fours. Now take your weight off of your hands. Gradually come to standing. You are standing, but your focus and interest are still down. Feeling heavy, your weight into the ground. Your knees are bent, then they gradually straighten. Explore the feeling of being vertical, upright. What is standing all about? Become aware of an ever-increasing circle of space around you. See the horizon. Go in all directions. Walk. Go ahead. Walk around the room. Maybe skip. Maybe do a little running if you have the room. You might not have the room to run around your house. I do. <laughs> But if you have the room to, take a little jog, run really fast, slowly even. Become aware of the space above you. Focus up. Reach up into the space. Explore the space above you. Grab at it. Try to get there. Try to fly sporadically, but still feel earthbound. Let it get so bouncy that you are comfortably part of the space above you. Even if the space is just an inch above, enjoy it. Let it develop into real elevation. High jumps, defy gravity, leap and fly. Help someone else jump, lift them up. If somebody else is in the room, maybe somebody's in the room with you. Use someone or something to help get you higher than ever. Climb on a box or a chair, hang off of the chair, be above the ground. Move as that allows, swing, climb, balance. How does it feel? Is it scary? Use it. <laughs> sense the height and sense the freedom. And that was your improv prompt for today or one of the improv prompts. I'm gonna give you one more. Um, Cause I know before we left, uh, we were kind of talking about what is organic and what's not and like being assertive and what was that? Being organic and like not and like being assertive and 
stuff like that. So I'm gonna give you one more exercise um, and we're gonna work on some organic forms. So I'm gonna read organic form for you. There is a Zen saying, you have allowed the cloth to weave the cloth. That is the essence of organic form. It is a term often used seemingly intuitively understood by those who know it, but quite mysterious and elusive to those who don't. Organic form is about the life within. It is the equivalent to the, or to the characters in a novel taking on a life of their own, which the novelist in writing obediently follows. It is like Michelangelo's idea that the form exists within the piece of marble. The sculptor's task is to chip away at the extraneous matter and uncover its presence. Organic form is void, does not have, void, does not have, not, none, right? Of anything that hasn't grown naturally from the basic idea. It relates to natural growth patterns, right? Like a flower that progresses from seed to sprout to plant to blossom and then to seed again. It has to do with the life of a piece. How and when and where it needs to go next in order to retain its own integrity and validity form and purpose. Yeah. So. In dance, it may be helpful to think in terms of movement within the stillness. Yeah, because oftentimes, we, I think we forget about stillness too. So like, start from, you know how I'm like, don't fidget. <laughs> well, take the movement of where you feel yourself fidgeting and what can that turn into? What kind of movement can that turn into? Because it's natural to you, it's organic to you. So like, take that fidget and what can you do with that? Mm -hmm. And then learn how to stop fidgeting. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so last improv is called A Life Within. Design a shape. Get into it and hold it for a short while. Get in touch with how that shape feels, where the tensions are, muscularly, dynamically. What is its intent? What is the shape about? Imagine that shape is going to come to life. How would it move? Do it and then come to life. Find out what the relationship is between its external design and its internal potential for movement. Experiment with radically different types of shapes, graceful ones, distorted ones, angular ones, soft ones, strong or weak ones, and the different lives that exist within each of them <laughs> that was a little rough um but yeah so work with that and play a little bit with the space that um you all have still thinking make sure you're thinking about um your pieces i don't know exactly because obviously we're not going to be able to all get together for april 25th but um just think about your choreo um, think about how it could evolve. Something that somebody has taught me that has really helped is like, you have your base. Now, what can you do with that base? How could you make it better? So think about different ways that you could improve each and every one of you guys' pieces. And um, how could we adjust it, make this even better? Yeah, always adding, um, always refining. Yeah, um, so I hope you enjoyed me reading to you <laughs> um, from this choreo book. Um, if you have any ideas, some thoughts, you can email me. Um, we can talk. If you have any questions about anything that I've said or read to you today, um, I would be more than happy to answer them. Um, just shoot me a text or email me or a message on Instagram or Facebook or something. And yeah, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I love you guys. I miss you guys. I hope you're doing well. Wash your hands. Bye. Mwah.